If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, and you really want to show it. If you're happy and you know it, do the bear dance. <laughs> Hi, the Many Shades of Gay. This is Zach, and I am your Thursday. This is the premiere of Zach's Variety Show, where there will be lots of things I will talk about. Some may be up your alley, and some may be up mine, but we all share the same alley, don't we? We're going to start this off with the hottie of the week. Now, let me tell you something. I don't need to know a man's name for me to fall in love with them or have fantasy dreams. They just have to look hot. And as you know before from my, what is it, my turn-ons and turn-offs video, I enjoy me a man with blonde hair and blue eyes. And let me tell you something, this guy is no exception. He has been seen in the preview for I Am Number 4. And he's also going to be the main star in Beastly. Oh, I just had to put a picture up. Here is a picture of this hottie. He is like a biscuit. I will smother him with butter and eat him up from head to toe. Let me just tell you something. He is my future baby daddy. No, you know, mm-hmm, mm. Enough about that before I queef. Ugh. So we're gonna first start off with the word I made up. I was inspired by the People's Choice Award. The word is floating. Has three definitions. The first one, emotionless human. Second, slut bombing. And third, the act of having a twat for a face. Example, Kirsten Stewart. And if you've seen the People's Choice Awards, you know why I think she has a twat on her face. Okay, you win an award and it's the people who voted for your ass, you look at them and say thank you. Even the people looking at you through the fucking TV. Okay, no, this is her, she wins the award. Oh, oh, thank you. Look, this is my side profile face. Oh, yes, I do. Bitch. Okay. The book is called Totally Joe. It's written by James Ho, or Howie, the writer of Bonocula, which is the vampire bunny rabbit. I love those books. But Totally Joe is a great book. It's a coming-to-age story about Joe. And the way it's written is written where each chapter starts off with the letter of the alphabet. So it goes from A through Z. And each chapter, either the subject or the topic, starts with that letter of the alphabet. Like they have B is for boy, H is for Halloween, and etc. It's a great book to give to little boys or anyone who's having a hard time coming out or just wants help on being themselves. I'm 28. This is for young adults. I love it. Easy read. Anyone can read it. I love it. I recommend it for everyone. Again, it's called Totally Joe, and it's by James Ho, H-O-W-E. Anything he writes is good. So, there you go. That's the book I'm introducing you to. Every week I'll introduce you to a book. It could be it's either by a gay author or a gay type of, or a gay genre book. Ugh. Sorry, I didn't have a lot of liquids today. Okay, there's that. And last but not least, in writer's block, the gay word of the week, which I want you to add into your vocabulary, is for all you dick lovers out there. It's called addicted, which means the art of being addicted to cock. So if you love cock, if you love eating cock, if you love sitting on cock, if you love tasting it, if you love playing with it, if you love stroking it up and down, then Start using the word addicted. So if they say, so what are you addicted to? You'd be like, I am addicted to dick. And it's spelled A-D-I-C-K-T-E-D. There you go. I hope you enjoyed this writer's block. Stay tuned for next week's writer's block. If you have any favorite words or any books you want me to talk about, leave it in the comment below. And who knows, that might be in next week's video. 
question that I'm gonna ask you, the audience, is who's your best gay role model of 2010? Was it Lady Gaga, Modern Family, Ellen, or Ricky Martin? Leave your answer down below in the crotch bar. And next week I'll reveal the answer. So there you go. Every week I'll be asking you a question and I want you to fucking answer it down below, okay? Because that don't play that. Two segments that I will film separately from the show are the quote of the day and the hot topic. So those will be either filmed out in NYC or around the house in different spots or outside in my neighborhood. So those I'll have different film reels for and I will add them in now. The first one you'll see is the hot topic and then the second one you'll see is the quote of the day. Enjoy. Hi everyone. I just have to say something that's really pissing me off. This is my hot topic for this week. Um, homosexuals to use the word fag. You know, it's never going to stop if the homosexuals don't stop saying the word fag. I just don't understand sometimes. It's like, it's like if you ever wanted to stop or you ever not want to hear it again, stop saying it yourself. Fucking bitch. Anyway, I gotta go. This is my stop. But that's my hot topic. Do you know anyone who uses the word fag that's a homosexual? I find it offensive myself, and I'm a homosexual. Now we're gonna go on to the quote of the day. Quote of the day comes from this movie. I think it was a movie or a TV show. I don't know. It is, start with a shower. You smell like you were fisting a cunt. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, I know where it's from now, talking about cunts. Californication. Okay. It was the lawyer, but this is the quote. Start with a shower. You smell like you were in a fisting contest. <laughs> okay. On today's WWZD, which stands for What Would Zach Do? The question asked to a random audience was, there's a baby lying in the middle of the street in NYC on a cold, snowy day. What would Zach do? Here are the answers. He'll just keep on walking till he gets to Mickey D. He doesn't give a shit. He's one selfish son of a bitch. If ZC Angel was to see a baby in the middle of the street, what do you think he would do? If ZC Angel was to see a baby in the middle of the street, I think he'd get out of the car. And kick it. If ZC Angel saw a baby in the middle of the street, what do you think he'd do? If that mother saw a baby in the street, <laughs> I know he would pick it up, take it home, and put it in a damn stew. I know you did it to my kid! You did it to my kid! Now you can leave your answers down below. What do you think I would do in that situation? Now my favorite segment of them all, Bitchin' in the Kitchen. This is the way where the man or woman gets to their man or woman's heart through the stomach. Some of them get them through the balls or just fist them. But I love feeding my man and he loves my food. And today I'm going to introduce you to a Puerto Rican typical meal. We're going to start off with appetizers, crackers with butter, the main course, arroz con sarchicha. And for dessert, Jello. On every episode of Bitchin' in the Kitchen, the first thing you need to do is clean the fucking kitchen. As you can tell, the fucking mess. This is what I get for not having a fucking cleanup crew. I'll be right back in a minute. Oh. I hope you love my new accessory. It's gonna be in every show from now. Um, it is my new bear hat that I got from my favorite cousin, Samantha, and it's tying in with Care Bear of the Week. Care Bear of the Week goes to Sunshine Bear, because even though today looks like shit in the morning because of the snowstorm we had last night, the sun came out and melted away most of the snow, and I was able to go to the store and get me some toasted bread and coffee. So... Thank you, Sunshine Bear, for bringing the sunlight down. Care a lot. 
place where you can go and finger your boyfriend, Carola. The place where you can go and suck on your dick. Treat it. But I'm going to end my show with viewers' question session, where you, the viewers, asked me anonymous, anonymously through my email or through FormSpring questions. Today I'm going to talk about two. The first one was from an anonymous viewer of ours who sent me a dilemma that they were having. Basically, he got a letter in the mail from his mom saying that he was going to hell because he was a homosexual. And he asked me what he should do. My advice to you is talk with her, try to reason with her, and if she still is a bigot about your your choice of lifestyle, just weed her out of your family tree. That's what I did with my stepmother, um, and that's what I recommend for you. You create your family. You don't just because you were born into it doesn't mean you have to be with them for the rest of your life. Um, so I hope that helped. And if she can't reason with you, then you don't need to reason with her. There's no way that you need to respect her if she can't respect you for your life. And the second question comes from a form spring question where you can ask anonymously, but I really wish I knew who this person was. They asked me if I was born with this voice. Fuck you. Thank you for watching That's Variety Show. I hope you enjoyed it. I know there's a lot of things you have to answer. I want you to answer them all. So start typing your answers. Make sure you watch Zach's Variety Show next week. Outer Course. It's not only for women.